focuses on automation and de-skilling devices. In this unit, you will understand the use of automation and de-skilling devices involved in garment manufacturing. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section. By the end of this unit, students will be able to outline the different types of automated workstations used in the garment manufacturing industry, identify the need for a work aid for a given garment, review the use of important work aids used in the garment manufacturing process. The first module gives an overview of automated workstations. When using edge guides, one requires accurate cutting. However, when die cutting is not possible, stitching jigs are used especially when stitching parts. For example, when collars need identical points, cuffs and patch pockets. Jigs are made of aluminum or plastic, two layers hinged, a slot cut to the shape of required stitch line, two pieces of garment parts laid in the center close to hold them firmly. The operator moves the jig carefully controlling it. The disadvantage is that if larger seam allowances are required, extra fabric has to be trimmed off. Separate jigs are needed for every style and therefore useful only when used for long production runs. Automatic jigs are also available. Jigs are also known as profiles in the garment industry. A basic jig can be easily fashioned by a sewing mechanic by joining two plies of plastic sheets of required thickness which have a groove for the needle to pass through. The groove mimics the edge of the pattern where the sewing line needs to be. The only modification to be done is that the single needle lock stitch machine will be fitted with a roller pressure foot instead of a regular pressure foot. This conversion of a single needle lock stitch machine into a jig assisted workstation does not yield high productivity but assures the shape of the part is shown consistently. Higher level of technology has become available these days for jig or profile sewing operations. These machines are generally called as profile sewing machines. Here the operator's role is to set two or three plies of fabric and interlining inside the profile, close and feed to the sewing head. Once the profile is fed, the machine automatically sews the profile as per its outer contour. To follow the contour of profile, the machine will use a mechanical sensor and turn the profile using pneumatic technology in the curves and corners automatically. Generally, the machine will have two operators setting up the profile and feeding them alternatively as the sewing cycle is short compared to the time taken for setting the profile manually. A fully automated workstation in apparel manufacturing industry aims to de-skill a sewing operator totally and make him a manual helper rather than someone handling a sewing machine. A regular sewing operator will pick up, align, feed, sew, trim and dispose. Whereas, in an automated workstation, the operator or helper will be needed majority of the time to pick up, in some cases position the fabric in and start the machine. The machine takes control of the sewing, trimming and in majority of the cases disposing also. By allowing the operator to be free for the major part of the sewing cycle, either the factory can use someone with very less skill or the operator can be used to operate multiple machines at the same time, thus enabling them to reduce labor cost. Also, the consistent quality products and higher productivity is achieved by automation. Majority of the automated sewing workstations will have the below parts apart from the sewing head. Folders, thread cutters, sophisticated guiding and positioning equipments operating before and during sewing, stackers after sewing operations are complete. The handling devices used in such workstations 
will be mechanically and pneumatically controlled. This will increase consumption of compressed air and the space requirements can be high with these machines. The very first case where automated machines can be classified where the operator has to continuously feed the machine with parts onto a conveyor and the sewing cycle is short. This machine automatically positions the part and the conveyor takes the part to the sewing head. The, the machine automatically cuts and stacks the sewn part. One of the major machinery manufacturers in these kind of systems is Atlanta Attachment Company from USA. This video shows the side closing of a long sleeve using an automated workstation.
this video shows a full automated workstation where the front placket of a t-shirt is fused, cut and stacked. This video shows the hem of a t-shirt sleeve done by a 3 thread bottom cover stitch in an automated workstation.
This video shows the hem of a t-shirt sleeve done by a 3 thread bottom cover stitch in a semi automated workstation. The second type of automated workstations where the sewing machine does all the sewing action and the handling during sewing. The preparation of parts to be fed into the sewing machine, loading the prepared assembly and unloading the stitched part will be done by the operator. Since the operator here is involved, the probability of the machine head doing work continuously is reduced. Invariably, the machine will have to wait for unloading unloading of the next piece. Also, if the preparation takes more time than the sewing cycle time, more time is lost by the sewing head which will remain idle. For example, profile sewing of collars and cuffs. This video shows the sewing of side seam pockets of a formal trouser with separate side facing. Complex sewing operations with additional folding or slashing is done accurately and quickly. Several parts needed for executing the operation are to be loaded onto the machine with the help of positioning devices that are either mechanical or optical. Once the loading is over, the sewing cycle commences 
which is very short. The utilization, the utilization of this machine is also below 100 due to all loading and positioning requirement. Automatic well pocket machines in trouser and jackets, automatic pocket attaching machines come under this category. Major machinery manufacturers like Dierkopp Elder specialize in these kind of machines. This video shows the weld pocket stitching and slashing of the pocket mouth using an automated workstation with laser positioning. This video shows attaching patch pockets to the left front of a men's shirt with and without flaps.
the fourth type of automated workstations where long sewing cycles are automated like sewing all six or seven buttonholes of a shirt front where the operator does only the loading and unloading. To prevent the operator from being idle, more than one workstation will be operated by the same operator. An example of this category is bottom hemming of t-shirts. One of the major machinery manufacturers in these kind of systems is Atlanta Attachment Company from USA. This video shows automatic buttonhole sewing of an entire placket in a men's shirt where you can clearly see the operator has enough time to cater to another workstation. This video shows the waistband finish of a knitted shorts with elastic.
This video shows the bottom hemming of a t-shirt with elastic. module focuses on de-skilling devices. Any addition made to a basic sewing machine with the objective of making the work easier and is, is generally called as work aids. They are also called as de-skilling devices as without these devices for executing the same operation higher level of skill will be required. Typically, a sewing operation is of short cycle in nature. The basic work content might vary anywhere from few seconds to two minutes. All these cycles will have the below six stages. They are pick up, orientate, match, sew, trim and dispose. In a sewing factory, the productivity is directly dependent on the needle making stitches. Out of the six elements of a sewing cycle, the time taken by the five elements other than the shoe constitute between 70 to 80 percent. By reducing the time taken for these non value adding elements of the sewing cycle, the needle can be operated for more time and thus producing more garments. The basic aim of all de skilling devices is to reduce the skill level required for an operation 
and increasing the productivity of the operation. This results in reduction of manufacturing cost. Throughout the sewing cycles, the operator constantly spends time on handling the material and manipulating it. Higher the material handling, lower are the chances of getting the required output and higher the chances of unwanted body motions and fabric creasing. Work aids aim to assist the sewing operator in reducing the material handling and boost productivity. The most commonly used work aids are those used for guiding or folding the fabric, trimming threads or other components and for stacking the work after sewing. The least common are those which assist is the initial picking of the parts to be sewn. In terms of their working, they could be operated pneumatically, mechanically or electronically. Some are built into the machine such as a special motor, some are variations of a normal machine part such as a special pressure foot or some are completely separate added part. Pneumatic equipment is operated by high pressure compressed air that drives the mechanism. It is widely used to operate thread trimmers and wipers, chain cutters and positioning and stacking devices. Attachments are devices that can be attached to the sewing machine without cutting through or changing the original frame of the machines. The removal of such an attachment leaves the machine in its original condition. Sewing machine attachments either guide, position or prepare the fabric for sewing. This is an attachment which prefers the fabric for sewing to create a single line of Pintec using an SNLS machine. This is how the seam of Pintec will look after sewing. This is an attachment which prepares the fabric for sewing to create a multiple lines of Pintec using multi needle chain stitch machine. This is how the seam of Pintec will look after sewing. In this construction, the chain construction will be seen at the back of the garment. This attachment is used to create spaghetti straps. Here a piping is sewn through the folder which is simultaneously turned inside by the metal wire. This creates a tubular structure without the stitch seen on the outside. This is the seam diagram for a spaghetti attachment. Guides do not move or fold the fabric during the sewing operation. The guide is actually a focusing device which enables the operator to position the fabric correctly and quickly during the operation. Here are a few occasions where guides can be used. A superimposed seam is constructed using two plies. The operator has to ensure the seam allowance to be the same throughout the stitch line. An extra piece like a lace or card is to be placed on a part a certain distance away from the edge of the part or an extra part like pocket needs to be sewn onto the bigger garment part. These are metal guides which have an upright section and a flat section. The flat section has slots through which the guides are bolted to the machine bed. The upright section forms the physical barrier beyond which the fabric cannot travel. When the upright edge is parallel to the stitching line, the operator makes sure that the two or three plies aligned are exactly butting against the upright section. This ensures that the seam allowance remains constant and is equal to the distance between the needle and the upright section of the guide. The operator need not worry about concentrating both on the needle point and the seam edge. This enables him to concentrate solely on stitching which increases the speed of sewing. A constant seam allowance is obtained and quality is improved. In case of overlock machines, the edge guide does not allow the operator to trim more than required. This helps in maintaining the correct size. Edge guides are of two types, one is of straight type which is used only when the seam line is straight. Curved types, this has the shaped curve allowing the operator to move the aligned curved seam continuously without stopping for realigning of seam. Rack guides are useful when a lace, trim or braid 
needs to be placed onto a garment part. These trims are generally wound in reels. The operator has to unwind and position them in the correct place under the needle. A rack guide is attached to the machine frame in front of the pressure foot having the same width as the trim. The trim goes through the rack guide and is fed to the needle. Positioning attachments are used when a smaller garment part needs to be positioned onto a bigger part. The operator needs to position the smaller part relative to both vertical and horizontal directions. For example, while positioning a pocket on the left front of a men's shirt, the operator has to position the pocket from the HPS, highest point of shoulder and the edge of the placket. Traditionally, a helper with a template of the left front with holes for the pocket positions will be marking the points with the help of a water soluble marker. To replace this, we can put a single edge guide to the back of the needle parallel to the shoulder line and another edge guide to the right indicating the edge of the front part. Once the front is positioned, it is understood that the top corner of the pocket should be under the needle position. This will remove one helper operation. Folders are used where fabric must be folded prior to sewing. In most cases, they are separate devices attached to the machine. Where the scale of folding is small, the folder is contained in the pressure foot itself. Folders are mostly used on machines having more than one needle. They are made of highly polished metal over which the material can pass smoothly. Their use depends on the type of garment they make and are justified only for moderate and high volume production. Folders enable great increase in production along with high standard of control over quality. When using folders, several factors to be taken into account. For example, when attaching separate strip, preferable continuous sequence of construction of garment. Folder are of many types depending on the seam they construct. Those which fold the fabric to finish an edge called hemmers, those which join garment sections and those which add a section of self fabric or another material to the garment through a bound seam are referred to as binders. Hemmers give either narrow fold or broader fold. A different hemmer is used depending on the width of the finished seam from 5 mm to 40 mm a separate folder may be used. A narrow, a narrow hem folder makes a double rolled hem used to finish edges of scarves and handkerchiefs and for shirt bottom swing hemmer is used. A hem wider than 5 mm requires a separate folder. Stitches used are 301 or 103. When using 401, the hem would be folded down rather than up. Folders are also combined with specialized machine feed systems to avoid roping effect when finishing hems, especially wider hems. Swing out folder is used when the sewing shirts of dresses. The beginning and end of the hem is bulky due to the placket front. The start of the hem might need to be turned freehand. Spring hemmers are used for thick and thin seams or crossover seams. Folders are used commonly for sewing shirt front plackets. They not only simplify the operation, but also reduce the number of operations, therefore increasing productivity. The use of this folder is most effective on twin needle machines. For example, front placketing using twin needle or four needle top center plate folder. Folders join major garment parts together. The most common one is used for jeans construction. The lap fell folder 401 twin needle machine folder can be used on a flat bed or the feed of the arm machine. Folders are also available which add self fabric or other material to a garment or binders. This is done either to finish edges neatly or create a decorative effect or both. For example, sleeve placket binder is used on a single needle lock stitch machine. Roles of binding are fixed on rack guides in such a manner 
that the fabric is supplied straight to the main fabric. It is important to know all the operations for which standard folders are available as folders are a major descaling device which aids in getting high productivity using lower grade sewing operators. Though the use of folders is welcomed from the manufacturer viewpoint, care has to be taken to get approvals for seam constructions from the buyers as few constructions do not give the exact appearance as wanted by buyers. For instance, a polo t-shirt sleeve can be hemmed in the component stage which may will make use of a folder and a flat hemming is quicker. When the side seam is sewn in the garment stage, the end of the sleeve has the protruding side seam which can be tacked by using a lock stitch machine. Though this construction is easier for the factory, some buyers might prefer the sleeve hem to be done after the side seam is attached to hide the end of the seam in the hem. This table displays details of folders used in apparel manufacturing. Binding of coat cover, edge binder, binding of bias strips on ladies blouses, bottom hemming of shirts, buttonhole placket with fusible inside, buttonhole placket sewing with piping, button placket with interlining, imitation placket folder, downturn button placket with interlining folder, binding operation with piping generally used in sleeve plackets and waistbands, setting of cups with sleeve, attach waistband to body, attaching two piece waistband with lining to body, attaching two piece straight yokes to shoulder. Instead of three operations of attaching, turning and edge stitch, the folder enables the operator to do this construction in one shot. Attaching two back yokes with the back body of men's shirt. Attaching two ply back yoke and extra piping with back body. Attaching sleeves to body in flat and fill construction. The folders will have two types, one is A type used for attaching and the other one is B type used for the top stitch. Attaching continuous bound sleeve placket to sleeve slit. Attaching Hollywood waistbands to body. In casual pajamas where waistband is created by hemming, the body with elastic in the channel created hem. Prepare the means for trouser waistband with gripper tape. Hem top of the shirt pocket along with labeled insertion. Sewing of side seam of shirts, outer seam of jeans generally used with two needle chain stitch machine. Variation of lap seam folder used when there is a difference in thickness comes along the lap seam like when sewing the back raise of jeans, the yoke seams offer twice the thickness. The folder has to absorb the thickness. Constructing loops for jeans using three thread cover stitch. Hemming of formal trousers using blind hem machine. Attaching tape binding. Insert a piping and join two plies together. Attaching yoke with body with piping between. Tape attaching generally done on knitted sportswear as a design element with the help of multi needle chain stitch machine. Creating box pleats in skirts, stringed attached to the bottom. Now we will view a series of videos which show the actual usage of folders in an apparel manufacturing factory. Other work aids include those which aid the operator to separate work from the machines without picking up a pair of scissors. In most cases, the operator chains of the parts which are later cut apart with scissors. The thread should be cut very close to the end of the seam and in case of chain stitch, 1 cm is left at the end to avoid unraveling. The left ends are then hand trimmed at a later stage. A simple method often used in lock stitch machines is a metal edge behind the needle bar which is sharp enough for the thread to be cut. However, lengths will vary. It is not suitable for chain stitch as when threads are pulled it will cause the stitch to break. In some machines knives are provided behind the pressure foot. These are operated by knee press to operate the material which has passed the knife or 
photoelectric or infrared detector which senses the presence or absence of fabric. Suitable knives are also used to cut reinforcing tape, elastic or other material. These are also called impact cutters. On lock stitch, underbed trimmers are combined with a needle positioner motor. It cuts the thread below the thread plate. When activated by operator, it heals back on the treadle. When the operator stops the machine and does not operate the thread cutter, the machine stops with the needle pushed down. When the thread cutter is operator, operated, the needle is automatically raised. It saves time and no trimming is required at a later stage. Here we see the underbed trimmer of a UBT machine. The machine rotates when the operator stops the machine and heals back it cuts. You can see the red thread which is the needle thread which has been cut by the trimmer. This is a machine using cloth puller made of plastic. The cloth puller is available behind the needle. It helps in pulling the fabric after the stitch is being made. By lifting up the needle, it can be disengaged and pressing down engages the puller feed. Now we see a demo of how the puller feed, cloth puller pulls the fabric. One more view of cloth puller pulling the fabric. A latchback device is another type of work aid found in overlock machine. Locking is done by either stitch condensation or bar tacking or lock stitch. Activities which a machinist performs during the sewing cycle such as raising the pressure foot, back tacking at the end of a seam etc. can be programmed into a microprocessor controlled machine along with the needle positioner and thread cutting. These machines are referred to as integrated sewing units or ISU. They are used for label attach top stitching patch pockets, collars, cuffs, etc. The amount of handling is considerably reduced. The raised pressure foot allows fabric insertion. Lower pressure foot commences sewing with back tack and sew from and cut at the end of the cycle. Compressed air is used to avoid curled edges of jersey fabric during over edging when hems are double rolled to push the fray ends into the fold of the hem. To cool over heated machines, clean dry compressed air is used. It requires a compressor and a storage vessel which acts as a reservoir, an air cooler to maintain constant temperature, air filter pipe work, drains to remove moisture and flexible tubing to carry air to individual workplace. When the valve is opened, air enters the cylinder which drives the piston and carries out the required work. The type of stackers depend on the size of the garment that is being disposed. Stackers are adjusted to the height of the table and parts are offloaded into boxes for smaller sewing parts. For larger sewing parts, the operator passes the piece off the back of the machine over the horizontal bar of the stacker. Pneumatic operation moves the bar away from the machine so that the garment falls aside. The bar then returns to its former position to avoid the next garment. This video shows a buttonhole placket stacker being used. This video shows a button placket stacker being used. This video shows disposal of cuff and collar after sewing. This video shows the use of a moving stacker used for attaching the back yoke to the body in a men's shirt. This video shows an automatic pneumatically controlled disposal mechanism for a surging operation. This video shows the use of cuff disposal and stacking. The slack feeder ensures materials are fed in relaxed state. From the rollers, the material hangs in a long slack loop. A tension occurs when this relaxed loop is pulled by the machine. Elastics are sewn and stretched, which gives a uniform gathering. Motor rollers meter at the right amount of 
elastic with a puller feed mechanism. They are used for wide elastics swing with four needles. The fabric is folded round the elastic by means of a folder. Pressure foot is a feed system component. The function of the pressure foot is to exert pressure to the top of the fabric. This prevents the fabric from flagging and ensures it does not get displaced during the sewing cycle. The pressure foot is attached to the pressure bar which in turn in contact with spring. The spring compression is controlled by a thumb screw nut which is used to adjust the pressure foot pressure. The section that contacts the fabric is the shoe. The lower surface of the shoe is the sole. The amount of pressure can be adjusted for stitching speed and fabric type and weight. Flagging can be avoided by more pressure and a smaller needle hole. The toe is the front portion that does not contact the sewing surface. It is responsible for holding, guiding and positioning the unsewn fabric. The heel is the back portion which holds the fabric and retains its position for feeding and stitching action to take place. Soles are very smooth surfaces but can be toothed or channeled depending on the application. The pressure foot has a hinged compensation or elevator compensation action or a combination of both. The former is the action of tilting the sole plane, the latter is raising the entire shoe up and down. Both these actions occur when fabric is fab when fabric of unequal thickness passes through it. Side elevator compensation is the raising of one of the two shoes where the pressure foot has two shoes. Various types of pressure feet are available for various special operations. For example, hinged foot, compensating foot, piping foot, zipper foot, teflon coated foot, carding foot, hemming foot, etc. Each area of the pressure foot has various applications. For example, short toes for stitching curves, long toes for straight seams, channeled soles for fitting over bulkily lapped seams. The compensated pressure foot enables seams of accurate width to be sewn and this allows the operator to work faster. It is used in any situation where there is difference in height to the left and right of an edge and stitching is required at a specific distance from the edge. They are also used for attaching and top stitching raised seams which have been created by turning the seam allowance to one side. Top stitching a seam. This is done by the compensating feet which is created by turning the seam allowance to one side. These could be such, a, such things as top stitching a lengthwise seam on skirt or pair of trousers or the lower edge of a waistband. Closing down a shirt collar. They are used for closing of seams such as inside of a shirt collar or the lower edge of the waistband where sink stitching is required. Sink stitching. It is called sink stitching as the name suggests it is a stitching which sinks under the turned edge of the fabric. It is also referred to as the stitching in the seam shadow. When it is accurately sewn it is almost invisible. Right compensated, left compensated, double compensated. Double compensating pressure foot is used for uniform and precise top stitching. This foot can be used for both right or left top stitching. Two step compensated. Two step compensated is used when the operator has to perform two different tasks requiring two different width of compensation on the same side. Examples are edge stitching and top stitching of the collar by the same operator. Half zip foot enables the stitching to be close to the teeth of the zip. Narrow toed pressure foot are also available which enables one to give a close stitching to the teeth of the pressure foot but with an improved fabric control. Gauging pressure foot is a pressure foot which is used as the simplest ruffling mechanism. It must be set continuously into a single ply of fabric before attaching it to another garment. Split ruffling foot is a special pressure foot which can be used to ruffle one fabric onto another 
without any tendency for the top plate to ruffle. Piping foot is ideally suited for fine uncarded piping on medium to heavy weight fabrics. A ridge in the sole of the foot under the left edge provides a guide for the piping edge. The right hand side of the sole is hollowed out allowing the free passage of the added thickness of the piping. Different piping foots are available for straight or curved corners or to aid in stitching along bulky trims such as a webbing, strapping and hook and loop tape. Teflon foot are used in combination with Teflon feed dog. They are used in stitching finer, shinier fabrics on which the metal marks by feed system components can leave shiny marks after ironing. Hammer foots are used when the hemming is very narrow, for example, in the hemming of handkerchiefs. Quilting foot is used to stitch parallel lines of quilting. This pressure foot acts as an edge guide. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit, you have learnt about the possible usages of automated workstations and their benefits. Further, you also got an overview of how to use de-skilling devices to improve productivity and quality. Thank you.